Welcome all. Let's paint some jackets today. I'll let everyone um, get comfortable and get all of your feeds set up. But as you come in, we have a good group today. If everyone could open up their chat from whatever kind of device that you are watching me from um, and let me know where you're from. I know it's a big group of people um, from, I think all around the country. So I'm in California. I'm in the smack dab middle of California. Um, Maryland, I love Maryland. Oh my gosh, cool, you guys. Whoa, oh my gosh. Oh, uh, oh hi is not far, it's like four hours from me. San Francisco, cool. Manchester, I have family who lives over there. Awesome, oh my goodness, you guys. So exciting reaching so many of you. Awesome. Couple Californians. Minnesota. No oh, snow. It's hot here. It's going to be 80 today, I think, where I am. But it's always hot here. It, we get two weeks of spring um, and then it's 107 for the rest of the year. So welcome. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you guys here. Uh, my name is Shelly. I own a company called Scribble and Script. I'm a professional calligrapher. Um, I paint denim jackets for a living. Um, I do a lot of bridal jackets for um, gals who want to wear them in their weddings. I do them for their bachelorette parties, anything that's custom. Um, I do them for little kids to actually have one on my desk I need to do later today. That is a birth announcement. It's going to go on a big sister. So it's going to say big sister on it. So the possibilities of jacket painting are practically endless. I'm going to teach you the technique to kind of get from your brain to the jacket. Um, I, because I am a hand letterer, I can do these um, freehand for the most part. But if any of you don't have any idea how to letter, you can do this too. So I have a couple techniques I'm going to teach you. I have two jackets to show you today. Um, you, are, my video that's pinned is my face. So hello, it's me. Um, I have another feed as well that you can find. It's the jacket. Um, you can sift through that in a couple minutes. But if you have any um, supplies and you want to go through it with me, cool. If you just want to watch me and let all of this soak into your brains, that will work too. These concepts are very, very easy to duplicate. So um, you'll have this to reference too because the video is being recorded. So anytime you guys want to go back and see all these fun little tricks. Um, also, reach out to me anytime. We're best friends now. <laughs> so you can find me on social media. Um, my Instagram is scribble.and.script. And you can shoot me a message if you ever have any questions about my jacket painting technique and you want to ask me personally. I'm here for you to do that too. Um, big thank you to Michaels for bringing me in. Michaels is my Disneyland and I'm there three times a week. <laughs> so I'm happy that they brought me on um, to do something personally for them since I use their stuff all the time. And another gigantic thanks to Duncan, um, one of my absolute favorite sponsors, because I use all of their paint to do anything on fabric anyway. So um, it was a really good marriage there. They brought me on to do all this fun stuff with you guys. So um, any questions that you guys have, any comments, I want this to be super, super interactive. So keep your chat open, shoot some things over to me, um, talk amongst yourselves. You guys are from everywhere. Um, all good places. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Um, and I hope the weather's with you today. And I hope you're all well. Let's have some fun, shall we? Um, okay. So you can keep my face up in the background if you'd like, but let's move on. If you can locate my video, that is um, my jacket. I have the first jacket on the table here. We're going to do two designs today. So we have the light colored jacket here. I'm going to stick to the basics with my light denim because I also have a dark denim to show you guys too. Typically people love a light denim or a medium denim if they're going to get long wear out of it. Um, and the design I'm going to do on this one is going to be a bridal jacket, but this again is relatable to anything you would want it to say. So I'm going to teach you how to get the letters on the jacket and then how to use um, the tulip puff paint, the dimensional fabric. Um, I have a paintbrush here that I may use a little bit. I have a piece of chalk that let me show you what happens. Okay, so say you want to write the word bride on this thing, but with me, I being a professional letterer, I can just whip it on with chalk. Now this is um, Crayola anti-dust chalk. This will work just fine for putting your design on your jacket and it rinses off um, usually without water, but if you needed to put a little warm water on it, it'll take the chalk off after your puff paint is dry. So you can always get your blueprint off after the fact. So use some chalk. 
Um, so if you're super talented, whip that thing out and write the word bride. But for us, <laughs> we are going to use a made at home stencil. So I chose a serif lettering. I wanna say this is like Times New Roman or something basic. I printed it out on just a rinky dink printer paper at home. I decided how big I wanted it because I didn't want to take up the entire jacket. I like my lettering to be within these panels. If you start to get over into the seams with a ton of your paint, it's going to look a little bit lumpy. So keep the bulk of your lettering in between these two panels. Um, some people prefer it way, way up high. Some people do a little bit lower, but I like a good center because that makes my brain happy, keeping things centered and straight. Um, also, if you wanted to use a ruler to make sure everything was straight cool, but for time's sake, I'm going to eyeball it also because I do this a lot. So what you do with this, you have this basic word written out on your paper. Here's where the chalk comes in. You're going to turn the page over and see how you can kind of see where all the letters are because it's a nice thin paper. You are going to go over and color it in with chalk. So what we're doing is putting the chalk dust on the back of these letters so that eventually we're going to turn this over on our jacket and see if we can't get the um, blueprint to show up. So go over. I like a good healthy amount of chalk. Make a mess. I'm a big fan of making messes. My kids love it. So we're just going to really healthy saturation. So this could be any font, you guys. Um, you could even look up some modern calligraphy fonts. Doesn't matter because you have help. You're gonna trace it. You can do this on a t-shirt. Yes, yes, yes. You can do this on anything, you guys, not just jean jackets. This is my technique. Um, I make a lot of wedding signs. That's what I stay the most busy with. I make day of decor signs. And when I work on wood, when I work on mirror, this is what I do for my wedding signs too. I take what I need to write, I flip it over, I color it over in chalk, go a couple, couple extra. You wanna definitely see that dust that sediment so you know that it's really, really um, well saturated in the chalk. So we make a mess and dust it off <laughs> to the side. And though you can't really see it from my feed, when you shine it in a certain light, you can tell that that chalk is there. So you wanna make sure you didn't forget any part of your word that has happened to me before. And we flip it over. I do have an online shop, I have an Etsy. Um, I don't use it very often because everything I make is so custom. I usually take most of my orders through my website um, or my Instagram. Um, okay, so I centered this on the page. I did that on purpose when I printed it so that I knew, okay, if I'm gonna lay my paper here-ish, I'm fairly centered. If you have it right justified or left justified, that's gonna um, confuse you a little bit. So make sure you have it printed center on your page. You lay it where you want it to go. And then you take anything, you guys. I use the back of a paintbrush because I'm gonna use this paintbrush anyway. You could use a pencil, you could use the chalk itself. The chalk is called anti uh, Crayola anti-dust chalk. You could use any chalk, any chalk is fine. I just am privy to the anti-dust because it's denser. Okay, so you take some kind of surface that's hard because now you're gonna trace over this. You don't wanna use something that's pointy so if you're gonna use a pencil or a pen, you gotta watch out because that may poke right through this paper and you're gonna have a pencil or pen on your jacket and that's what we want to avoid. So I'm just gonna use the back of this paintbrush. You could even use the eraser side of a pencil. And I'm just gonna loosely draw in my lines. See how I'm just pushing relatively hard here. Sorry if I shake you guys. So I want that chalk to transfer. There's such a thing called carbon transferring. If you wanna get real fancy at um, Michael's, they have carbon transfer paper and that works for more different surfaces, but the idea is the same. We're just putting something on the back of this so that when I push, that chalk's gonna show up on my jacket. The more exact you want to be, that is up to you. I'm pretty good at freehanding. So I'm not gonna go super exact on this. And especially because we only have so much time together, I don't wanna waste all of our time doing my chalk transfer, okay? So we're just gonna basically, I'll do the basic idea. So my spacing is good and my serifs are good like that. Just kind of throw it on there. Okay, let's see, did it show? Yay, look, see, it's not pretty but we're gonna make it pretty. So don't worry, that's coming. So now we have the blueprint. See the blueprint of the B, the R, the I, the D, the E. Again, like I said, the more exact you wanna be, you just need to be more meticulous 
about where you press into your jacket, okay? But again, time's sake, we're just kind of skipping through this. All right, now what I'm gonna do, you guys, I am going to, oh, sorry, my kid walked in. <laughs> we're working from home today. Okay, so we use, I'm gonna use black puff paint. Still in, it's fine. Um, I'm gonna use black puff paint for this part. And then I'm actually gonna go back over and use um, white puff paint in the back that's gonna say bride and calligraphy. So we're just gonna go along and I'm, I like to make it nice and globby guys because I want it to have dimension. So we're gonna go through, don't forget your serifs and add this in. Now, if you're having any kind of globbing you want more control with, that's where your paintbrush comes in. So say, you think, oh, that's just too much. That's just, but look how good it looks. It's so dense. If you want to spread it out, get yourself a paintbrush. It doesn't matter the type of paintbrush. This is one I really just grabbed out of my um, office. This is the first one I grabbed. It's like a chisel tip, smaller paintbrush. You want to go small because the bigger you go on the brush, the more globby it's going to be. So I like to spread it out if you want, and you can get a little bit more even tone on the B. And then if you wanted to continue from there and branch out, see, this is how the paintbrush works. So then you can just treat it like this and make your outline first. Look at that. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm all shaky because I've only had coffee today. Normally I like to eat before I let her, but I forgot. Okay. So we're going to go through and kind of spread that paint out. This is a very slow process, friends. Jacket lettering takes time which is why when I sell the jackets, um, I sell them for so much because it does take, when I'm really kind of sitting down and doing it, it takes a few hours to kind of get done. So we're just gonna go through. And if you forget where all of your lines are supposed to be and how thick and thin you need to make things, you have your guide right there. So you can go through. And this, um, this fabric paint is so opaque, I love it. A lot of paint, all paints are not created equal. I will tell you that right now. So make sure you have the appropriate paint for what you're doing. This puffy um, fabric paint that um, we just tagged. That's what you wanna get, the tulip fabric paint. Don't just get any random um, acrylic paint. It's not gonna work as well. And it won't stay if you ever need to wash. Okay, so here's the idea of mapping these out. Now I'm gonna go, um, well, let's see for time. I, I would go and we slowly add our shading in and look, see, you can just pull from this backstroke and add your thickness in from your paint on your backstroke. And then that also evens that paint out. So we don't wanna go overboard, <coughs> excuse me. We wanna make sure everything's nice and even. Now you will end up putting multiple layers on these letters. I would say at least, at least two, at least two layers of paint. And that's where the paintbrush really comes in handy. So you're not being super globby. So I also, oh, to the side that you guys can't see. Look what I have here. I have a Ziploc bag. I like to lay all of my utensils on a Ziploc bag so that I just have it to the side. A paper plate would work. Um, I like to kind of dab my paint and make sure it doesn't glob right on my jacket. Maybe start out on the pa uh, plastic bag and then move to your jacket. Because the last thing you want with any type of paint is a big splatter anywhere. And it does happen because if you push too hard, sometimes we get excited and we glob it everywhere. So get your steady movement on the bag first and then transfer it to your jacket. Like I said, I am extra shaky today. So I need to be careful with my globs. <laughs> so we're going to go up, create our serif, follow our guide. And we're just going to do a basic blueprint first. So this is fine. We'll do thin first and then we'll go back because I can see where all of my chalk is and that's where you want it to be thick. So you could even go and add an outline where we have the thickness like this. Any questions so far? Has anyone done this before with chalk transfer? I'd be interested to know if anyone knew this trick. I love it. You will find yourself using it very often in all things. So even if, look how cool that looks guys. Even if you wanted to just do an outline, that's a whole type of lettering right there. So you could do that as well. Now say you want to 
this is going to be washable. Now, when you guys get your, when you get your paint, it comes in packaging that tells you all of the details of how to protect your fabrics. It is washable. You do set it. Um, so the packaging that this comes in will explain all of that to you and the proper steps. It's led, um, it's written out really easy to understand. So you will end up being able to wash these jackets after this fabric paint is on. Um, okay, so, so even if you guys want to add your paint to the bag first, and then we can look, dab our paint, and then we can apply it if you want. That's if you're too nervous to put it on the jacket first, because some people are just like, oh, I really don't want to ruin this jacket. So if you think it's a little bit more of a safe bet, you can put it on your, br on your brush first and then add it to the jacket. Oh, I love this. This is turning out good. I love a classic serif font. I think it just really dresses things up like that. We're gonna extend that serif a little bit. <coughs> oh, something caught my throat. Okay. All right, and even though this is a little messy, we're gonna go back and clean this up with our second, um, our second layer. Our second layer is meant to go clean our lines up. So once this is dry, dry super fast actually. If I had you guys for a couple hours, we would go back and add um, the second layer. But if you leave this out to dry for an hour or two, you can go back and do that second layer and clean up and make this look perfect, perfect. But for now, um, we'll just kind of get through. Now, if you do this on a t-shirt, Veronica, um, you always want to have something in between your t-shirt, especially if it's cotton, um, a paper would work, a piece of tracing paper, a plastic bag. You always want to separate your material, always, always with anything you ever do on a t-shirt. Jackets, don't have to worry about that. Jean is intense, so we don't have to worry about our jean bleeding. Okay, so we're continuing on, create the top of our eye. You know, I'm going to go back to just using my paint. I really like how this is turning out when I just use it like this because I've got some good control there. So we make our curve like that all the way down. And see, again, if we're not super straight, don't worry because you're going to get a second chance to go through and straighten out your lines when you do that second layer. And then if you want, you can add some of this in. I just go like that. Then we're going to take our paintbrush and spread it like so. And again, doesn't matter what kind of paintbrush. They have packs of these. I got these from Michael's. Um, I believe it was in, it was in a big pack, big pack of um, paintbrushes. I think there were 20 of them and they're all different sizes. They come in big and small. Um, let's see, Kimberly, that is a question for our Michael's and Duncan team, if anyone can address that. They have, I know it's probably subject to um, location and especially with the pandemic, um, people are crafting like crazy. So if it was out of stock, um, I'm sure our team can help you get your hands on some. But it has been, I mean, the crafts, the two Michaels that we have here, we have two in town and they, bless their hearts, have been working so hard to keep everything in stock but they cannot fill those shelves as fast as people are wanting to craft, which I love. Okay, so we're gonna continue over. See how we can still kind of see our outline. And I don't want our outline too chalky because then it's just harder to take off. So fill that in, curve this way, cool. Oh, let's add a little fun in there. And so this is my design for lettering. I'm going to show you um, a design that also includes florals on our dark jacket. And that'll go a little bit quicker. The lettering is always the most time consuming method because you just have to make it look perfect. At least I do, I'm crazy about it. So we just, and this is kind of satisfying. Just taking your time, going and filling in that, that gap. Yeah. There's our D. <clears throat> Allergies here are insane. I don't know where you guys are in the country, but all of the blossoms are out where we are. So forgive my coughing and sniffling. Okay, so we're gonna do the outline of our E. Almost done with this part. 
like that. And again, I'm using my um, actual letters for reference too, because sometimes it is kind of hard to see, but I can duplicate these shapes fairly easily with the serifs. If this is too hard for you guys, you can always do what we call a sans serif, which doesn't have the, these are serifs. See these little feet that come off the letters? Um, if you don't like that or it's too complicated for you, go ahead and do a sans serif. I really like, um, what is it? It's, uh, oh gosh, I never, Century, Century Gothic, I love. And uh, that's in Microsoft Word. So if you guys ever want a really pretty sans serif, print out what you want in Century Gothic. And that one's really pretty too. If this is just a little too formal or a little too complicated for you to do the serifs, because it does take some practice to kind of get down. But I love it. Perfect. Okay, so there's the shape of our E. Then we go through, paint that in. And you'll get the hang of this too. As you're going, you're going to find every single letter you create easier and easier. So your first jackets, the best advice I can give you guys, don't spend a bunch of money on a jacket when you're learning this. Go get one at Old Navy. Go get one at um, Walmart. Don't get yourself a Madewell jacket right away, okay? Take your time. I did mess up a bunch of jackets before I actually got good at this. So get yourself some scrappers. Um, let's see. Do you allow paint to dry in between applications? Absolutely. Yes, I do. Um, about depending, this is weird, but depending on like the temperature of your house or if you're letting it dry outside, sometimes it dries faster than not. But I usually let these sit for about an hour and a half, two hours until I go and um, add it in, add in the second layer. Okay, so there's our Felicia, first layer. Hey, this is Felicia. I, there's a couple of questions that you can, you may have missed while you were looking yeah, down. Um, I just wanna know, can you use regular fabric paint? You can use regular fabric fabric paint, absolutely. I tend to like the puffy paint because of the dimension it gives and it's easier to spread for me. With regular fabric paint, I find myself dipping into my fabric paint way too often. So I like to do the blueprint in the puffy paint, but absolutely, you can use um, regular fabric paint. And what I use for that is also actually the Tulip um, soft body fabric paint. If I'm ever gonna do like a white fabric paint and um, go through with a paintbrush. Um, let's okay. see. Um, I do letters freehand and also do calligraphy, so I don't have to do the letter transferring. Good for you, Kimberly. Hey, girl. Um, let's see. Did you even use the beads in a bottle by Tulip? The beads in a bottle. What is that? I don't know what beads in a bottle is. So the answer is no, I have not used that. <laughs> um, okay. I think we're caught up with questions, but keep asking. I'm sorry, guys. I get, in the, I get in the zone when I'm painting. Okay. Here's the cool part. You ready for this? Now, because I'm a hand letterer and a calligrapher, I'm going to freehand this. Um, but what you could do after your paint is completely dry of your black, you could go back and do the same um, stenciling I just taught you. Um, does it get stiff after painting? It does not. It does not get stiff, which is why I like it so much. It's soft bodied. Um, and it doesn't crack and it doesn't cake. So this is perfect for any type of fabric. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go over and do this really cool look where I do bride in calligraphy over this black. And I'm gonna kind of carry it out to the side. We're gonna see what happens um, because I'm gonna freehand this. But here's the idea. Let's get this white going and we'll see if I nail this. Now I'm not gonna touch it with my paintbrush. I want this to stick out. I want it to be dimensional. So we're gonna go, all right, let's see. Woo, here we go. Oh my gosh, I'm doing it. I'm doing it, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. B. Oh my gosh, we're going guys, we're going. I, okay, I'm gonna take a break. Woo, oh my goodness, the stress, the stress of it all. Oh, everyone's watching, okay. Okay, we're gonna keep going, keep going. E. Oh yeah! Woohoo! <laughs> Look, <laughs> isn't that cool? I love it. Awesome. Um, so I love that because the white is now um, raised up against the back part of the bride. Um, let's see. How is it after laundering? 
Um, I, I like to limit the times I wash my jean jackets when I do have this painting, because I mean, when anything is handmade, you do want to hand painted, you want to limit the amounts of times you wash it. That's just life. Um, but I spot clean it mostly wherever it needs it. After you launder it, I would say definitely don't put it in the dryer, hang dry. You can use fabric softener so that it doesn't end up stiff. Um, just protect it like you would anything that's hand painted. Um, let's see. Did you use glitter fabric spray paint? You could, that would be cool. I would love that. Um, I'm not doing it today, but glitter is all the rage right now. So you could absolutely use that, anything. Um, can you freehand with the chalk first? Yes, you can. Absolutely, Kimberly. And when I do it at home, when I'm doing uh, jackets for brides, I just go ahead and boom, 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 write it with chalk first instead of doing the stencil. But for those of us who don't have um, a calligraphy background, <laughs> you'd wanna use your stencils and that's what makes it so easy. Um, so this is our design number one, everybody. And I wanna move on to our dark jacket. So if you have a dark denim that you really want things to pop on, I'm going to switch over to, I look at my fancy way I have all my puff paints. <laughs> this is because my kids put them in here. I can't have anything from Tulip or Duncan because it all just ends up in my kids' hands. So I'm gonna use all my colors. We're gonna do a really fun spring design for our dark denim and we're gonna do some florets. So I'm gonna teach you how to do some florets. Feel free to ask questions while I am transitioning my jacket types and I will address them as they come in, okay? How's everybody doing? How's, you guys like it? Does it seem okay? Does it seem doable for you? Watch, I'm gonna mess it up right now. Let me set it to the side. Oh, okay. Lay that down. That's good to go. Okay, we've got our dark. We've got our dark down. I also brought that paintbrush. I think I might use it for my florals too. Oh, you guys, can I iron the garment? Yes, you can. Just be careful, just like anything. Just, just be careful. This is a custom item, so. Okay, so transitioning to our dark denim. I really love this dark. And with all of the 90s trends in right now, dark denim is everything. Can you imagine this paired with a tie dye top? Yes. Um, let's see, can you put your website in the chat and Instagram? Yes, um, I will. I did a jacket using both acrylic paint and tulip fabric paints. Will washing it, I think be a problem? No. It shouldn't. When you're dealing with proper fabric paints, everybody, they're meant to um, last with wear and tear of being washed. Again, I hate to beat a dead horse, but just be delicate. Just be delicate with your pieces, okay? All right, let's see. Um, can you use a hairdryer? No, don't do that. No, no, <laughs> don't, don't use a hairdryer. Um, it, it really isn't meant to be dried with a heat gun or a hairdryer, um, just, be prepared to spend the proper amount of time. If you apply a hairdryer, it'll probably crack the paint of any paint you use. Don't ever, ever do that. No, 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 no. Um, let's see. Oh, you love my teaching lesson. Thanks, Tammy. Oh, thank you guys. Um, let's see. Okay, I think we're, oh, can, oops. Would you normally do the second coat of black before the white embellishment? Yes, yes, I normally would. Today we're saving time. So normally you'd go and you'd finish up your black and then you'd move to the white just in case what if your hand got in the black as you're trying to do the white so you want to make sure one layer is completely done and then you move on to the next just for your brains um sake okay let's do some florets you guys i have this really really easy technique for flowers and i'm just going let's do i'm just going to pick all the prettiest colors i'm really feeling I'm feeling pastels lately and I feel like everybody else is too. So let's do those colors. So it's just personal preference. I'm really into these colors right now. What did I pick? Bright teal, neon blue, purple, neon pink. That's what I'm gonna go for today. And I'm just gonna throw these down here. Here's how I do flowers. You guys are gonna be like, oh, that's so easy, Shelly. Uh, let's see, we're just gonna, this is all freehand. And if you guys wanted to, you would take your chalk and you would go starting with your chalk and draw your flowers in with your chalk. Watch how I do these flowers. I'll write one in chalk for you guys. So easy, so easy. C shape number one, C shape. C shape number two, 
C shape number three. And you're just gonna curl around in C shapes, maybe add some S shapes in. Now this is looking really stupid right now, but it's gonna look cool when we have paint. Look at that. So we're just gonna C shape and S shape all the way around until your flower is as big as you want it. So you're just gonna keep on rolling. Make your C's and your S's longer and thinner as you move out. Oh, yay, cool. Okay, <laughs> happy. Cool. Um, all tulip paints, yes. All tulip um, slick dimensional paints, because I really like how opaque they are. They show up really pretty. Okay, and here we go. So I'm, let's start with the bright teal. And we're just going to go. Oh, wait, one question. Did you say how long to let it dry before you wash? I give it a day. I let it sit for a day before I wash it. And again, I really don't like to wash them. So if I can stay away from washing my jackets, I don't want to sound gross, but I do spot clean them. I just don't, you know, unless it gets completely trashed, then you can throw it in the, in the wash. Um, do you have to add fabric medium to acrylic paint before applying to the fabric? No, no, it's good to go. You can, um, or sorry, to acrylic paint. I don't like to use acrylic paint on my fabric. I use only fabric paint. Um, okay, so here's how we, and we're just going to go around and do our flowers. Ooh, I love it. Oh, I got a little globby. I want this to be really dimensional. So I'm going to go heavy on my paint here. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to go really heavy. Oh, I love it. And if you want to stray from the chalk design you did, do it. I just love how raised up this is. I love it, love it, love it. So if I can stand to use this puff paint for my florals, I will. I like to use the puff paint more than I do um, a paintbrush for my florals. And it's better with your flowers, you guys, if you skip from side to side, instead of just going in one intense circle, go from side to side, do that one and skip back over here. Do one over here. Then you can fill in the gap, skip back over. So then it doesn't look too perfect. You don't want it to look perfect. Do that and we just keep on going. See, I'm not following my exact blueprint and that's fine because we will end up um, erasing that anyway. And how you get your chalk off is with a damp washcloth. Just water only. Um, let's see, let's see. Did you put anything on the fabric before painting? No, I did not, not necessary. You can just go for it. Don't need anything fancy. Just start with your fabric paint and go for it. Okay, I think I'm going way big with my flower here. So here's flower number one. Isn't that cool? Um, what is a tip to keep your hand from smearing the paint when you're drawing? Donna, practice girl, just practice. You just have to be aware of where your palm is. Just be careful. It comes with time and it comes with practice. So I always make sure, look at my hand position and you may notice when I'm painting, my palm is rested all the way over to the right and my paint is over here or my hand is raised. I'm never resting my palm way too close to the paint because you will accidentally smear it. But again, you just have to be a little bit more aware of it. Okay, so there's my floret number one. I'm gonna switch colors now. Let's do some pink. And I'm just gonna do the same thing, but I'm going to try to make it just a little bit different design. So we're gonna go, oh, look at that color. Oh my gosh, I hope you can see the way this looks. This pink is crazy good. And I like to make them different sizes. So say, you know, my, my teal flower is really big. So I'm gonna make my pink flower not so big, like a little rosette, like that. Oh, I love it. So I'm gonna make this one a little smaller. Uh, oh yeah, see, and we just, oh, you, I hope you can see how cool this color is. My ring light may have, um, blasted out the light. You can kind of see it a little better right there. This is just gorgeous. Um, did I wash the fabric first to remove sizing or product finishing? You can. Um, I didn't with these and I also do not when brides supply jackets to me. I leave that up to the bride because when it's not my property and I do like my clients to supply jackets to me so they know the fit is good and they like the color. Um, and I leave that up to them. I say, if you want to do it, you go for it. But if not, I will do it as is. And that's fine too. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. I'll show you again, Kimberly. Um, is it possible to use the tulip puff paints on a waxy surface and then transfer it later? I've never tried that, Patty. I've never tried that. I don't know. 
I don't think that that would, I just like to write on the fabric itself. Um, I'd have to read a little bit more about the product and if that's even possible. Um, you can do it with windows, not fabric though. Okay. Oh, Craig, let me know. Okay, you can do it with windows, not fabric. So no, that's a no-go for that question. Kimberly, let me show you some more about these flowers. I think because they're overly simple. So let's add in some blue. I'm gonna, let's start a new bunch of flowers. I'm gonna start a bunch right up here. So again, you're gonna just do C shape number one, C shape number one, and you're going to curl around with C shape number two. And they're not perfect Cs, they're supposed to be little blobs. C shape number three, and just make this design where it goes around and around and looks like um, leaves, leaflets, like this. And you just round and round you go and make them imperfect C shapes, like this. I love this blue too. Oh my gosh, I love it. If you wanted to get really crazy and say you're just very talented as, at painting, you could mix colors too. You could do blue and then add some green in once the blue is dry or if it's wet, you can blend it. I'm not super um, wonderful at the painting itself. I'm more of a letterer type person and I just do my very best when it comes to the paint part. But some of you I'm sure are amazing illustrators and I just fake it till I make it <laughs> because all my clients always ask for flowers. So um, let's see what else. Ooh, lavender. So I'm going to place my lavender. I want this to kind of be a really big bouquet. So let's do the lavender right here. Oh, that did it on its own. So we're going to make a nice lavender here. And again, once you get better at this, look how fast you can kind of go. I think the messier, the better, because then it looks more natural. So we just side to side, again, don't go in a perfect circle. You want this to look a little bit haphazard. And if you need to fix something later, you always can. You can go back and do it later. Let's see, make it just barely touch. I don't want my paints to blend, so I'm not gonna let it touch too much. Like that. Just curl around until you feel like that's a big enough flower for you. Personal preference completely. So now we have this like interesting looking bouquet situation going on right there with our flowers. Let's add in some leaves. I'm gonna get my, oh, do I want neon green or do I want leaf green? Oh, let's do leaf green. <laughs> let's do that. Oh, you can also use it on a mask. These are non-toxic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you make masks, wonderful. Yes, yes you can. That's great info. Okay, so now um, leaves. Leaves are super easy as well. I always start at the seam of my flowers go out in a wave, whoops, out in a wave like this. You just kind of have to get used to the air bubbles. I, or I haven't shaken these. I just kind of took them out of the package and used them. So we're gonna go like that. And then it depends, sometimes you like, sometimes people like to do a little line in the middle for a leaf. Um, let's see, do you see the design in your mind before you freehand or do you follow a particular design? I don't, this is, I don't really see it in my mind. I see it as I go. So I did flower number one, and then I took a look at my space. I'm like, huh, where am I gonna put the next one? Oh, I'll put it here. <laughs> and then I look, oh, okay, I'll put the next one here. So I like it to be as organic as possible. I don't follow a big plan unless it comes to actual lettering. Um, then I have it pre-made. I have the design pre-made because I need approval from my clients. Um, so then I have it mapped out. But as far as my florals go, I like to just let my hand guide where I go. And I think it ends up better that way. So I'd like to do um, my leaves in twos. Some people are better at leaves than me. This is my very basic idea of leaves, but I do want to fill um, my space. I don't want it to look off centered. So I wanna fill my negative space as much as I can. So I'm gonna add another, let me shake this. Oh, be sure you don't shake. If you guys wanna shake your um, paint pens, don't shake it over your jacket. <laughs> Shake it over something else or put your hand in the way because you never want it to come out. It happens sometimes. Okay, so we're gonna sweep this out. Here's a leaf over here. And let's go another leaf. I'm gonna make this one really big. Oh yeah, like that. Oh, guys, I love it. Do a leaf up here. See, and I'm just making sure I fill in gaps because I don't want these to look completely off-centered leaf like that. Let's kind of make that touch like so. 
Um, gosh, you know what? We need some yellow. We need some yellow in here. And I want to fill some of this space. So here's what we do. I'm going to add some little blossoms. We'll call these blossoms, but they're just dots. They're just smushes like this. So watch this. Just circles, everybody. Just circles. And look at that. <laughs> now they look like little um, blossoms. So you can do this with a few colors too. Just little um, sequences of three or four, maybe like that. And look how cute. Oh, that really added something to it. I love it. For me, everybody, this seems done to me. This feels done. Um, if you even wanted to, you could add wording on the bottom. Um, but I, I like this. I think this is good. Um, let's see, what is a good material on which to practice? Um, I love paper to practice on. You can use inexpensive paper. You can use good paper like HP Premium 32. Um, you can use card stock or go and get you. Oh, thank you. Oh, you like it. Um, you can go get some cheap fabric. You can get some um, really cheap t-shirts. T-shirts are tougher than jean, I think, because t-shirts tend to move more because they're thinner fabric. I love working on jean because it stays put. It stays where you want it. Um, so I, I really love working on jean and I'm so glad that it's still popular because I'll do this as long as people want me to. Um, so there's, there's design number two. I'm going to leave, um, we're going to open it to questions. If you guys want to leave your feet on the jacket, you can, if you want to switch to my face, I'll, um, discuss some of your questions. Um, have I ever painted denim pants? No one's asked me to do denim pants yet, but I would, <laughs> I would absolutely. Um, let's see. Would using a piece of cardboard under the jacket help? Yes, you could do a piece of cardboard easily because I've done so many of these. I have learned keeping it flat, unbuttoning it, unbutton the jacket, lay it out flat, and then at least you're not gonna deal with all these ripples. See how you can even see some ripples right here? That's because I didn't unbutton this first. You wanna pull it as tight as you can and then go from there. If you wanted to stretch it over cardboard, that would work as well too. Um, it does not crack. No, this does not crack, which is why I love it so much. Um, some You get into cracking if you use the wrong types of paint. If you just go and grab acrylic paint, even hard, hard bodied, soft bodied acrylic paint, that's not meant for fabric. So it will crack. That's meant for other um, surfaces. So you want to make sure your paint is meant for fabric. Um, if you ever try to do like leather or anything, you need to do fabric or leather paint. So the best advice I could give you guys moving forward, use the right tools for the medium. Don't get lazy, get what you need. Um, paint on backpacks. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that would be so fun. I haven't had a backpack in like 15 years, but yes, you could do all of this exact same stuff on backpacks. The material is very similar, um, to Jean. Um, Donna, you've inspired me to try this. Good. Yay. I'm glad. That's awesome. Um, Kimberly, do you only do the back of the jacket sleeve? You could do the sleeve. I haven't been asked to do sleeves yet, but I do the collar. A lot of people ask me to do their wedding dates on the collar and you can do that as well. So you just unfold it and letter on it all identical. Um, let's see. Let's see. What's Sentangle? What is that? <laughs> Mary? What is that? I don't know what that is. I assume you remove the chalk after the paint is dry. The best way to remove the chalk is a wet washcloth. You can do a warm wet washcloth. You can do a cold wet washcloth, just water. That's all you need. Don't put anything, don't put soap, um, just damp, damp washcloth. I love a microfiber if you have it, but you don't have to be picky. Make sure it's not a paper towel. If you use a paper towel, the fiber of the paper towel will get all over your jacket and it will tinge your jean to look white. So you don't wanna do that. Get a fabric um, washcloth. Could you trace the design in chalk or disappearing ink and trace then paint? I don't trust disappearing ink because what if it doesn't disappear? There's just too many variables there. I stick to chalk. There are also chalk pencils. Um, Stabilo has chalk pencils also found at Michael's. All of this is there. Um, you could use like a graphite pencil, but again, chalk for me comes off the absolute easiest and you don't have this huge headache of, oh no, now I can't get this blueprint off. So I stick to chalk. You could also sharpen your chalk. So if you go get one of those just hand pencil sharpeners with the big hole, you can sharpen the chalk so that it acts more like a fine point and it's not this weird blunt tip. So do that too and that'll help. Um, how much do I price my jackets for? 
when the client supplies the jacket to me, the lettering alone starts at 85 um, to add any other designs, flowers, extra words, extra work on the collar. It goes up from there. But 85 is my base point for one word um, in just like a basic white. Um, if anything else comes into play, if they need to, me to supply the jacket, then you have to consider the cost of the jacket, but not just the cost, the time you take to go procure the jacket, um, which for me, I have three kids. <laughs> so that's worth its weight in gold, me getting out of the house, like to go get a jacket, it's impossible. Um, let's see, can you transfer a simple picture? Yes, you can. So you could do it the same way. You could just chalk out the outline and trace over it and there's a picture. So everything is done exactly the same as, as lettering. Um, does the carbon paper blueprint come out easily? I've never tried carbon paper on jackets because I just like the way my chalk works. Um, I've done carbon paper on my acrylic signs. I've done it on my mirrors. I've done it on wood, but I've not done it on fabric. So you'd have to play around with that and just be careful. Use it on a burner fabric first before you do it on something A, that you're paid for, or if you want it for personal use, you want to try a burner piece. I call it a burner piece first. Um, thrift store is, yes, thrift store is amazing for denim, especially right now because the 90s, all of those fashions are so in and people are um, upcycling and reusing all of their denim stuff. So you should be able to find those. Um, also, Walmart is really good. So there you can get um, cheap, cheap denim. It's not great quality, but you can get it to practice on at Walmart for super cheap. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's basically it, you guys. We... Um, if, again, if you have any other questions for me that pop up, I'll hang out with you guys. I, I don't hear anyone screaming outside, so I think the baby is taken care of now. So I can hang out with you guys for a little bit more if you want to shoot some, some ideas back and forth. I would love to hear what your favorite design was. Who chooses design number one with the lettering and who likes design number two? Write in and let me know which number one or number two. Who likes the lettering number one or the flowers number two? Cool. Oh my gosh. It's like even. Yay. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Yeah. And usually what I do is I add florals to my lettering. So it's usually a combination of both, but wanted to kind of show you different types. Um, what type of paint can you use on finer fabric like silk? Laura, I have not tried silk. I have not tried it. So I don't want to, I don't want to point you in the wrong direction. I don't know why this the tulip fabric paints wouldn't work for silk because they are so soft bodied. Um, I think it would be fine. You probably wanna apply it with a paintbrush though, a small one and do very small strokes and light strokes so that you're not caking the fabric on. Um, do I have any of my work to show you? You'd think. <laughs> no, every all of my work is halfway in progress in the other room right now. Check out my Instagram. If you guys do Instagram, you can see it's my whole portfolio and my website. My website is um, scribbleandscript.com. So you can see um, the jackets that I do for brides. You can see the wedding signs that I make. And if you want to follow me in real time, I'm on Instagram more than I should be. So you can see the things that I create in real time on my Instagram. I'm glad hey, you guys. That's awesome. Yes. I had a question came to me, uh, inbox to me. What are you currently working on? I, today, um, I'm working on seating charts for three brides. So I do a lot of acrylic signage that really big, um, it looks like plastic or it looks like glass. We call it acrylic or plexiglass. Um, so I'm creating three seating charts today of 200 and more people that I waited last minute to do. Um, so I got to do those today. I have four brides coming to pick up stuff this weekend for their Friday and Saturday weddings. So I'm trying to crank all of that out. Um, some of the acrylic is left clear. Some is going to be back painted. And I will put all of that in my stories. And I do a lot of behind the scenes of the signs that I make and the things that I do on my Instagram. So you guys can follow along with me. Um, how did I learn this type of art? I'm self-taught. Uh, I hate to say like, oh, I'm self-taught. I did this all on my own, but I've been doing this for five years. I've been in business for myself for five years with Scribble and Script. Um, and this, it didn't start like this. So as it's gone on, I've just had to create um, venues for myself and I teach calligraphy. I do online calligraphy classes. Um, for those of you in different states, I do public calligraphy classes once they opened back up here. So I've been teaching it for four years and whatever anyone asks me to do, I say yes. And I worry about how to do it later. I fake it till I make it. So here I am. <laughs>
Um, but a lot of, I looked at a lot of people who did this on YouTube and on Instagram um, and Facebook and all that stuff back in 2016 when I learned it and I copied as much as I could try to learn from them. Um, let's see, Instagram handle is, let me write it in. It is scribble dot and dot script. Let me add that. Boop. Oh, it's all caps, but it's not supposed to be, guys. Let's do that. Scribble and script. Boop. Um, you have to put the periods in between because there's a gal in Nova Scotia who also has the name Scribble and Script, and she got that before I could. So I have to put uh, periods in between. Um, let's see. Will comments and information also be available on the YouTube broadcast? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, Insta scribble dot and dot script. This has been one of the better classes I've taken so far. Thanks, Donna. That's a wonderful compliment. Ooh, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad you guys liked it. Self-taught on calligraphy as well. Yes. Yes. I'm a self-taught calligraphy artist. I got into it at the right time though, because in 2016, not everyone was doing this. Um, and so I hit, I struck while the iron was hot and I just, it was all luck. <laughs> I just got really lucky. And I, ha you have to put a lot of time into it, into learning the craft. Um, website. Cool. Thank you, Jackie. That is my website. Um, calligraphy class. Yeah. You guys follow me, follow me on social media. I have a Facebook page too. That's all linked on my Instagram. Um, and I post, I do an online workshop usually once a month. So I'll be doing another one in May, um, probably one in June, one in July. So you guys can catch on to any of those and they include all of your supplies that I mail to you. So you end up with my workbook, with a brush pen, with tracing paper, all the things that I need to teach you. So those will end up in your hands um, that I mail to you and that's included in the price. I'm phenomenal, Tiffany, oh my goodness, thank you. Um, thanks you guys, cool. So, um, be sure that you guys follow Tulip Color Crafts um, for more inspiration. I do a lot of work with them. So anytime I make things, you'll see them pop up in my feed and theirs. We collab a lot together because I use all their stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, you took one of my workshops. Cool. I do fun fabric crafting. Good, Jennifer. Good. Will I be doing any more classes with Michaels? I don't know. Will I? <laughs> I want, I, I'm always a yes. Um, I hope to, absolutely. Good, you guys. When are you, when are my online calligraphy workshops? I don't have one set up for May yet. I need to look at my calendar um, and set that up, but I usually put them up about three weeks in advance. So you can see if you're available, they're usually on the weekends, either a Saturday or a Sunday, and I make them time zone friendly. So a lot of you guys are on the East Coast or Central time zone. So I make them um, available to you guys, not at ridiculous hours because I am Pacific Standard Time. So I try to make them time zone friendly. Um, let's see, would love to continue calligraphy ideas. You can take my class by following me, Kimberly. Um, so give me a follow on Instagram and you'll see I um, post always, always when my classes are. So you'll be able to see those a few times pop up in your feed. And it's even better if you click the notifications on your Instagram. And then every time I post, I mean, not that I want to overkill you with my posts, but if you're looking for when those are, you can click the notifications on for my Instagram. Thank you, Veronica. How nice. How does one sign up? Um, is it all on my website information? I don't know if it's on my website. I need to revamp that, but um, you sign up through Eventbrite. I have everything listed on Eventbrite when I do put the class live. You go buy your ticket on Eventbrite. Um, you send me your shipping address and then everything goes from there. It's all Zoom, just like this. I have the same looking feed. I have my phone um, on the workbook that I go through with you and I have one on my face. And it's very similar to this, to this setup, um, how I do my online classes. So you can um, sign up on Eventbrite. Just look for the link. I've, I'll post it on my Instagram. I'll set that up hopefully today. Thank you guys. Oh, don't flatter me. <laughs> I'm glad you had a good time. I had a good time with you. Yay. It's your first online class with Michaels. Awesome. Good, Kimberly. I'm glad. I'm glad. Share with me some of your lettering stuff. I would love to see it. Um, message me on Instagram. I would love to see what you make, what all of you make. Tag me, tag Tulip Color Crafts, tag Michaels. When you guys post the things you make, we see it. We see it and we love to see it. So be sure you're, po you're posting and you're tagging in your stories and in your feed and we repost too. So if you ever wanna do that, we love to see what you make. So tag all three of us, Michaels, Tulip Color Crafts and me, Scribble and Script, love to see it. Um, let's see, miss the Instagram information. Could you put in comments? Jackie is on that right now. Um, Jackie just posted Tulip Color Crafts. Um, 
Mine, is, oh, let's see, let me, I wanna make sure I didn't miss any questions really quick. Dee, 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 dee. Jackie just posted mine. Mine is scribble.and.script. Um, and then Michael's. Do we have, I wonder, is Michael's um, like the grand Michael's or do we do like Michael's Clovis, Michael's Fresno? I wonder if there's different ones. Um, oh, here, Felicia just said it. Please follow us on all social media platforms and share your crafts using hashtag make it with Michael's and hashtag Michael's classes. Do we need to use something over the drawing to protect it or seal it? Nope, sure don't. It's good to go after you're done with it, which is why I love it so very much. No, um, no mask, no fuss. You don't have to seal it. Um, it's perfectly fine after you do it, after you make it. Really great class. I've always dabbled in lettering, but I suck. <laughs> I have so many pens and books. Um, once someone teaches you, you'll be fine. It's really hard to have books and try to learn from books. So you need someone in front of you instructing you how to do it step by step and you will get over that hump, I promise. That's what my workshops are for. I wanna make sure everybody gets over that and knows how to do things step by step. So join in on one of those. Um, turning it inside out, wash in cool or cold water and hang to dry. There you go. Cool. Oh, thank you. Ooh. Hope you do another Michael's workshop. This was awesome. Thank you guys. So sweet. This has made my day. <laughs> and it's only 11 o'clock where I am. Cool. Um, so yeah, everybody keep up with us. <coughs> Sorry, allergies, I promise. Everybody, if you have anything that comes up, slide into my DMs for my Instagram. Um, oh, you can email me too. My email is um, scribbleandscript at yahoo.com. You guys can reach out to me. If you're interested in hiring me for a project, there are forms on my website. Um, there's an inquiry tab that you can click on and you can inquire about um, specific projects you need me for. I do a little bit of everything. So you don't have to just want wedding stuff. You can ask for home decor items. Um, personal items like jackets, um, custom stuff. I do all of it. Um, let's see, do more of the Michael's workshops. I already followed you on Insta. Thanks guys. Cool. Happy crafting indeed. <laughs> Yay. You all know what you're doing this weekend. Go get you some jean jackets. Hurry and get the jackets before the seasons change though. I know you guys are from everywhere here in California. They're gearing up for summer already. And so it's really hard to find jean jackets. Um, I got these ones from Old Navy. I love the, um, the jean jackets from Old Navy. They're $40 each with tax and all of that. Um, and I do like the fit. There's some boyfriend fits. There's a bunch of different colors. There's different um, crops and longer jackets and all that. So Old Navy is a really good one-stop shop for jean jackets. You can get them online too. Um, usually if people order jackets from me and they are from other states, I have them order them online and send them straight to me. Uh, I do the lettering and I mail them back, uh, no shipping costs. So I just shoot it back. I am in Clovis. So Fresno, yeah, basically. <laughs> it's all the same. It's the suburb of Fresno. So smack dab middle of California, the very, very hot part of California. Um, so I, you know, I'll, I'll hit, we'll hang out till 11, I think probably a couple more minutes. Um, oh, cool. Oh, awesome. Yeah, you know, people don't people don't really know about Clovis specifically and they give Fresno a bad rap, but I actually really love it here. <laughs> I've been here a very long time and I went to Fresno State, so I like it here a lot. Uh, but those of you on the other side of the country, you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. If you're here with me in California, enjoy the rest of your late morning. Um, if you're in another country, Bravo to you for logging in. I love it. <laughs> I love getting in front of so many of you guys and us all coming together, especially in these really, really weird times and doing something that is fun and relaxing and learning a new skill. I think that's really important for self-care in these really icky, creepy times. So I'm here to bring a little bit of happiness to your day, hopefully, because you brought a lot of happiness to mine. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, do I ever teach so, oh, no, I don't. I don't teach it so in quilt shows. I don't, I mean, they don't have them right now anyway, but um, that would be something I should look into. Yes, I will do that. I love the sewers and quilters. Those are a special type of person. They're just so cool. I love those people. From Peru, Marcella, yay, cool. Oh, that's so awesome. I love it. I love it, love it. Oh, cool. Okay, guys. So um, as you feel you wanna log off, go ahead and log off. Um, this feed, Felicia said, will be available. Um, it's recorded. So if you guys need to go back and rewatch it, do we have a link? 
um, where that will be or will they get an email? What's the, the follow up? Thank you guys. Yay. Um, for how they can watch this. Does, does everyone know? Maybe they know. Oh, here we go. Oh, perfect. So Felicia just let you guys know class is being recorded. So you, there is the link michaels.com backslash back. Wow. Backslash classes. Um, and it'll be available 24 to 48 hours after. Um, yeah, next, next few days, it'll be uploaded. So you guys can rewatch it which will be traumatizing to me because I don't like rewatching myself. So you guys do it and I'll just pretend <laughs> that I watched it. I know I want to hear my own voice. I want to do it. I'm going to be like, what am I doing with my hands this whole time? Miami. Yay. Cool, Letty. I have friends who just moved to Miami and they love it. They love, love, love it. And we're going to try to visit in July, which may be crazy with the weather, but I'm going to try to get, get out there. Stay away from those crocodiles in Florida, man. I like California. Yeah. I like, I like California too. It's so expensive, but I'm not going to go anywhere. I belong here forever and ever. Um, any more questions about, oh, bye from Georgia. Bye. Bye Georgia. Yay. From Georgia. So many fun places. I love it. Oh, thank you. Oh, so cool. I'm so humbled. I'm so humbled by all of you who are just being so sweet to me. I needed that. <laughs> so I've been a little really crazy lately. Um, and I already lost a lid, which happens all the time. Um, and I lost it. Anyway. <laughs> Julie, I just want to say thank you again. And we definitely hope to have you on another class. Yay. Thank I hope so too. That was awesome. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.